You might not think it, but the Cutlass Red is one of the go-to ships for players who enjoy first-person combat in Star Citizen, at least until we get more diverse options later in development. I'm Farrister, and in this video I review the Star Citizen ship, the Drake Cutlass Red. Star Citizen is currently in alpha testing with the Cutlass Red as one of the flyable ships. The Cutlass Red is a multi-crew capable ship described as a medical ship, but can easily be flown solo. For those of you who've seen other ship reviews on this channel, you'll recognise the usual format for this video. This review is split into five sections, starting with a ship tour, assessing combat performance, reviewing handling and visibility, looking at the operating costs before finally summarising. I've included timestamps in the video description to help navigate to each part of the review, and if you're one of the 80% of people watching who isn't yet subscribed to the channel, be sure to subscribe to be notified of future videos. Part 1. Ship Tour And flowing up the ramp access at the back of the Cutlass Red, you're immediately drawn to a small cargo bay at the back. Moving further forward through the airlock section, you gain access to the medical portion of the Cutlass Red. The main feature are these two medical beds on either side, which do work in-game by selecting Set as Preferred ICU on the terminal. There are two bunk beds for crew use in this section, as well as two airlocks leading to the outside of the ship on either side of the module. A special thank you to Delnander for allowing use of his Cutlass Red for this video. Moving forward through to the cockpit section. There are another two beds in this section, as well as a small Drake-style bathroom. And then right at the front are the seats for the pilot and the co-pilot, which raise up as you enter them. Part 2. Combat Performance Your Garden Variety Cutlass Red comes armed with four gimbaled size 2 weapons, defaulting to two Badger Repeaters and two Distortion Repeaters. You can opt to swap them out for fixed size 3 weapons if you so choose, although the gimbals are actually forgiving in this ship. There's a manned turret option which is armed with a spotlight only, no weapons, so if you're bringing a co-pilot, don't expect much from them. And there are no missiles on the Cutlass Red either. All of that said, you get most of the base combat performance you might expect from a Cutlass. The size 2 shield generator offers reasonable protection, the firepower is sufficient to deal with smaller ships, and if you do start taking damage, the Cutlass is surprisingly tanky you're likely to see many parts fall off the ship before you see it explode. Accordingly, for much of the footage you see today, you may notice missing pieces of the ship. And given the role of the Cutlass Red, as a combat ambulance nipping around the battlefield to support and rescue people, that makes sense. Part 3. Handling and Visibility Starting with visibility, in line with the Cutlass Black, it's actually better than you might expect. The raised chair gives a good vantage point to the pilot, but offers better visibility above than below. There are a couple of struts used in the cockpit construction, but largely they don't block the view. And actually, if you do look down, you get a flavour for what's below you, which is helpful for landing. In terms of handling, the cutlass is reasonable. It does carry momentum somewhat, but retains the feeling of a small to medium sized craft. The rotating VTOL engines can be helpful for controlling to some extent where the thrust goes. One slightly annoying flight characteristic is how the nose wants to droop, so you find yourself always applying gentle back pressure on the stick. It's particularly noticeable when flying in atmosphere and one to be aware of. Acceleration is good and braking is actually fairly reasonable for a ship of this size. Putting all of that together, the Cutlass offers decent manoeuvrability for her size. If you've seen these reviews before, you know the drill, Quantum Drive needs replacing. Especially true for the awful Bolon equipped by default on the Cutlass Red, but it's upgradable to an XL1 or similar. Part 4. Operating Costs The Cutlass Red isn't super cheap to operate, but it's not really expensive either. 
Once you factor in repairs and refueling, you're probably into a few thousand Alpha UEC. It's especially easy to rack up a repair bill in the Cutlass Red. That said, you do have a lot of options to more than cover that cost, and the Cutlass Red can do a decent job at making money. There's a limited capacity for cargo storage, although you probably wouldn't want to be actively trading with this ship. But that means that box delivery type contracts are more than feasible. The Cutlass Red can handle some of the easier to medium difficulty combat contracts with some ease, especially against smaller fighters. And finally, the Cutlass Red has the unique option of being able to use the respawn beds to make it a great platform for completing the first person combat contracts. If something goes wrong and you die, you'll just wake up on your ship, probably parked right outside of your contract area, ready to try again. Part 5. The Verdict It's important to temper this verdict with the fact that the gameplay this ship is supposed to really provide a platform for, medical gameplay, really isn't in-game yet. The beds do work as mobile respawn points, but that's it, so that's not the full ambulance-style gameplay originally envisaged. That said, the inclusion of it makes the Cutlass Red incredibly versatile. It has a rugged, rough and ready feel to it, which I'm sure would appeal to many players, not to mention the wonderful gimmick of the flashing lights and pointless spotlight turrets, which, levity aside, help to make this ship unique. You can get your Cutlass Red for 1.8 million Alpha UEC in-game, or for $135 in big boy money. Honestly, I'd be reluctant to spend the real cash on this ship. The in-game price is reasonable, especially if you have something else you're using to earn money, and I'd probably not spend real money on it. Not because it's not a good ship, but because I think it would be more compelling to buy something cheaper and use that to build the in-game funds. After all, it's a lot to spend on a video game module for just one person. But do you agree? I know there's a lot of love for the Cutlass Red, and rightfully so, so let me know in the comments if you think I'm way off base on this one. If you found this review helpful, you may also be interested in my review of another rugged ship, the Anvil Terrapin. Please also subscribe if you'd like to see future Star Citizen content. Outside of that, if you're looking for a group who plays Star Citizen regularly, I've included a link to my organisation in the video description. Thank you for watching.